Hey everyone, it's Matt here and today I'm doing another unboxing video and today I will be unboxing Starlink Battle for Atlas for the Nintendo Switch. Now this was given to me by Teddy, a really close friend of mine who just straight up didn't want this, even though he loves Star Fox. So for some reason, I think he ended up getting the Switch bundle that just came with this for free. He saw it and even though, you know, Fox McCloud is in it, uh, the R-Wing is in it. I'm not a huge fan of Star Fox, but from what I've played, I really do enjoy it and he just never opened it up so he gave it to me uh haven't had a lot of use for it but i thought it would be nice to unbox it and maybe even play it maybe do a review of it over at our game time channel so turning the box around it actually just shows the process of how you get everything started up you can choose your pilot select any starship you can choose any weapon and then see it come to life in game because if you're not familiar with the toys to life genre of games that are uh basically disney infinity I, there aren't a lot of them disney infinity skylander and also uh lego dimensions you can basically see your toys come to life in game putting them on a base of some kind connecting it via usb to your console it says here that it also includes a digital Xena Starship, a digital Shredder weapon, and an exclusive add-on Star Wolf mission, or a few missions. Hopefully, by the way, Teddy did not use those. I'm pretty sure this was sealed when I got it, although it's been a while since I uh, opened this and since I recorded this footage. You can also complete your fleet by buying other, uh, buying other add-ons, and that's kind of where this genre kind of got a little pricey, and I think that uh, not everyone actually ended up uh, part taking in it and I do think that's why it's kind of a dead genre but you didn't hear that from me so either way I am opening up the uh, box right now very difficult to do with uh, one to two hands with a camera in front of me either way though uh, this does include the game by the way thank God so here it is right here it says that Wi-Fi uh, will be required which is important also build battle win um, you know, I think where this series in particular went wrong is... What is that, a hair? What the hell is that, an eyelash? What the hell? It's weird. What is that? I don't like that. Either way, opening this thing up, you can see it's very plain. I do like the cover on the actual cart itself, but just very plain overall inside. Um, looking at the side of the box here, it actually says uh, just stuff about the, the game, you know, mix and match these different uh, both characters and, you know, weapons and whatnot. Um, but I was saying before, I think where the issue with Starlink in particular, not that it's a bad game, I haven't had the chance to play it as of yet. So it's not about, oh, this game sucks or anything like that. It's just, when you look at Disney Infinity, I don't know how Skylanders actually worked, though, to be fair. Somehow, it caught lightning in a bottle there, maybe being the first of its kind. But when you look at Disney Infinity and LEGO Dimensions, they have the IPs. This just doesn't have that. So when you're trying to search up these characters to get more characters for your game, it just, th there are issues. Um, also, just looking at that base, it's just, it's cool that it's its own little like switch controller type base, but if you lose that, then you can't use the characters. So that sucks um i have to admit though i really do like these figures i love the way uh, star fox looks i love the way this other dude looks whose name did appear and i feel bad that i've forgotten it um you can see w how you can actually kind of click these things into the base and just looking at the base itself it's you know I i'm sure some will say that it looks a little clunky but i think it actually looks pretty damn cool um even these weapons as well look pretty interesting uh i don't say cool at least with this freezer one it looks interesting to say the least but i really do love the um the way that the figures have been crafted especially this beautiful baby right here this r-wing looks amazing and it feels good too it doesn't feel f like uh it, it doesn't feel low quality at all it very much feels as if i'm holding a very um, not like over a hundred dollars or something, but still a very high quality, uh, figure of it. And this is, by the way, how it clicks in. So again, it looks, um, very unwieldy, but you know, moving this thing around though, I have to say it isn't going to fall out at all. Same thing with the cloud as well. It just looks like he's going to fall out, but as you can see, he is not. So that's actually really cool that, um, that it clicks in like this. 
And now we're moving on to the poster that came with the game, which I think is pretty cool as well. Um, hopefully I become a fan of the game, so this poster actually means something, could potentially put it up. But um, but I have to say, though, the artwork, uh, that's something that really stinks about a game like this and some of these other Toys to Life games. They look amazing. They, From what I've played, uh, they can be really fun. But, uh, again, don't know too much about this one. But in general, though, you literally need to spend a fair amount of money, unless you're getting the, uh, a bunch of these characters used, uh, you need to spend a fair amount of money to get these different pilots and and whatnot. So at a certain point, if you're having a checklist trying to get all these characters in game, um, yes, they come with some great figures and all, but it would be very much like I remember the Street Fighter V controversy when there was so much hidden DLC um, and, and, and very few characters compared to previous games. Although these starships, again, look beautiful, but it reminds me of that controversy. Imagine if you had to buy them not just as DLC packs or DLC characters for a few dollars, but DLC figures. So I hate that it sounds like I'm ragging on this so much because it looks amazing, but I think that's why this didn't really take off. Ha, ah, ship pun. And that about wraps up this video. As you can see, everything is laid out before you. And I was thinking of doing a review of this over at our Game Time channel. That channel will be linked down in the description box down below. But if you like this video, you can actually like it here on this channel. And subscribe to this channel. And also, if you have any experience with Starlink Battle for Atlas for the PS4 as well. This is also on the PS4 or on the Switch. I don't think it's on the Xbox One. Uh, if you have any experience with it, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you recommend or don't recommend it would love to hear that down below all right everybody so love you all take care and see you